God. It's the attack. The attack of the Santa Clones. Jeez, guys. Oh man, we got the Santa Claus gang here. Hey! I wish you were not recording what he just oh, said. Oh man, don't don't mug me, guys. I've been a good boy. Merry Christmas! Oh, oh wait, was there a Santa Claus convention in town or what? I must have seen 20 Santa Clauses running around. Well, welcome back viewers, and it's time for another episode of Half-Assed Viewing Pleasure here as we run into visit the show Peter Gallo at the Horton Gallery, and the title of this show is Painting Symptom Symptoms. Well, I just went back and talked to uh, Sean Horton and asked him if he had a list of the titles. He says it's on the website, which doesn't help me much. Anyway, this is a nice little painting. So I'm going to fudge this. I first uh, became acquainted with Peter Gallo's paintings that a this was uh, the Miami uh, Art Fair about four or five years ago, and uh, at that time he was showing with uh, Nick Lawrence and Freight Volume. Now, I don't know the title of this piece either, but it's kind of a uh, three-masted uh, guy in the middle. And then we see that he's kind of... Uh, let the canvas hang on the edge there. Kind of relates to some of the stuff that uh, Steve Perino was doing. Oh, and this is probably the biggest uh, Peter painting I've ever seen. Most of his work is fairly uh, small or intimate. I think one of the things that I enjoyed about uh, Peter's work is that it's uh, in a lot of ways, this is kind of a harbinger of what I've been talking about lately as far as the crappy little paintings or the abject paintings. Friendship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Disaster. So it says modernism, sort of. It's got these little wooden slats on there. One of the things that also uh, is kind of intriguing is that uh, Peter always uses this kind of uh, limited palette, and I was just thinking about these kinds of pinks that he gets in there. This sort of uh, from a from the dirty magenta down to some kind of like a Bazooka Joe bubblegum pink. There's also a very funky quality about this. This looks like he's got uh, toothpicks that he's stuck on here. It kind of recalls uh, some of the Picabia portraits he'd do with matchsticks. And he's got this sewed on real funky down here. There's the painter man. Intifada. Shake it, shake it. it looks like he found uh, this piece of wood. Just cut out the canvas and stapled it on there. 
This is, uh, I guess, one of the themes of the show is this uh, three-masted schooner. Now, if any of you have seen the, uh, the Pusat Dart East River Studio show, he also was uh, just stapling his linen onto uh, frames or onto boards. And I think there is kind of a, uh, a shared aesthetic of the real funky and uh, rugged, primitive kind of urgency to slap these pieces together. This is nice. He's sort of got, getting into some grays here. Nice double weave linen. And I see a lot of our uh, Williamsburg uh, painting fans out here. Der gute Geschmeckt, welche sich mehr und mehr durch die Welt as beatet hat sich angefangen, zuerst unter dem. It's like, it's got his GE logos on here. Oh, I like that. Like pure ultra blue. And you got the bubblegum pink. And I don't know, this, this canvas and this linen that he works on looks like it's sat out in the weather for about two years. So you got it at some kind of a rummage sale. You know, and the thing that I also like is that uh, some people try to try to go funky, and it's almost uh, kind of a manneristic affectation. But somehow, uh, I get a feeling of authenticity with Peter's work. <laughs> stuff really is funky <laughs> and I think Peter lives up in Vermont maybe he teaches up there it's just on a nice rugged piece of board you can't fake a finish like that so but anyway that I'm not dead yet it's on canvas board I guess the reason that I like these uh, pieces that are kind of funky is because it makes you more aware of the materials and uh, what a uh, matrix of suspended uh, belief you have to get your head into really to, to look at paintings. Well, now I snagged the bashful uh, Peter Gallo and I'm going to try to talk to him a little bit about his work. So congratulations on the show. You know, unfortunately, they did not have a listing of all the titles. So what is the title of this piece? Uh, this one is Paint Symptoms. That, this is the title piece of the show. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece. Thanks. Now, I was talking to some people about uh, the work. You know, you've got kind of a funky quality. Uh, is there some, do you, do you like uh, consider yourself part of uh, kind of the abject art thing or this is just the way that the, the work turns out or how do you feel about that? It's just the way the work turns out. And you live in Vermont, is that right? I do, yeah. And you've been up there for a while? Yes, Forever? I was, I, I was born in Vermont, so I'm really? a Vermonter, I'm a Vermonter. Did you get flooded out there a couple of months ago? We and did. You lose came. your bridge or anything? Yeah, we did. Oh, sorry to hear that. We did. So you come down here, you're having the show. Right. How about the palette? That's always been kind of intriguing for me. I was talking about it's almost this bubblegum pink and, and brown, and you sort of have limited it down to like a very limited number of colors. Right. Any, any reason for that, or you just don't have, don't have other, can't get other colors in Vermont? 
Yeah, I guess that's sort of it. Well, you know, I, it's probably really, in some ways, it's the, it's the, where I live, it's very austere. There's, the light is very, very, um, anacreous and, and white, and it's certain times of the year where, especially in the fall, where the leaves have gone. And I, I mean, I draw it from sort of the environment, the space that I work in. And, but I like, you know, it's, it's also like early Mondrian and yes. painting that I love to go look at, you know, the early Mondrian paintings where he just had a gray, pink, and blue palette. So there is a kind of a formalistic uh, yeah. desire behind it. Also, yeah. this piece over here, I was thinking, this is about the largest uh, one of your pieces I've ever seen. The, this piece with the ship in there. Yeah. Have you been sort of expanding the scale? Because most of the work I saw was on a pretty intimate scale. Yeah, that's true. I've, I've got some. I've got some big works that I've been working on for a while, but I, but I just haven't shown them yet. I'm, I haven't been ready to show them yet. And uh, they finally dragged this one out of the studio. Yeah, well, I drove. We drove. I drove it down with a friend. We, <laughs> Threw it in the pickup truck and came down. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we went to the Lincoln Tunnel, too. <laughs> All right, Peter. Well, you did a good job. Thanks. Thanks, Peter Gallon. Thanks. Congratulations. Your show's great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a quick walk through. <laughs> oh, Peter Gallo. Paint symptoms here at the Sean Horton Gallery on West 22nd Street. Thanks, Kate. Have a good night. Thank you. Mm-hmm.